Hi, welcome to Penn Central 99's channel. I'm Terry and this is my River Mountain Model Railroad. Today I'm going to do a quick clinic on installing jumper wires on your turnouts. Um, as most of us know, um, electricity is a real important thing when running our trains. It doesn't matter if it's DC or DCC. All of our trains run on, um, on electricity and joints and turnouts uh, can have an uh, a tendency to cause lack of electricity and cause your locomotives to start and stutter. So I'm going to show you real quick how to install jumper wires on your turnouts to, to help try and eliminate the loss of electrical power while they're running through turnouts. So let's go ahead and go out to the workbench and get started. For today's clinic on installing jumper wires on turnouts, I'm going to be using this HO scale code 83 uh, manual right turnout. Uh, these are very similar to the number 4 turnout. It doesn't matter if it's a number 4, number 6, number 8, left, right, or even a Y. Uh, this jumper wire technique um, will cover any size turnout or why. So let's go ahead and get it out of the blister pack and uh, we'll go ahead and go over some stuff. The turnout is out of the blister pack um, and as you can see with these manual turnout controls they come with this little switch control here. Uh, I do not use these so I just take them off and for those of you that have never removed these before uh, this little plastic armature here will just push down and swing out of the way Okay, so that you can free that. Once you get that armature free from the, uh, the turnout, uh, this piece will just pull right out of place. And there you go. So now we have just a regular manual turnout and we'll go ahead and work with this. Let's take a few minutes and talk about why we're installing jumper wires on our turnouts. Uh, when it comes to turnouts, there's a couple of separate pieces of rail in order to uh, in order for the train to take the route that it needs to go. Uh, as you can see here we've got several pieces of separate uh, rail that there's a chance where and because they're separate pieces there's a chance that the electricity may not transfer through uh, those points. As you can see here we've got an insulated frog so that when these two lines come together we don't create a short. Here in order to take the diverging route we've got a pivot point um, and then we've got uh, switch points at the top here. Now even though that there's a plate that joins these lines here to help transfer with the electricity, you know, after years of use, switching back and forth, uh, for people paint their ties, they paint their track, they install ballast, and in order to hold the ballast down, um, they use glue and other things. So there's a tendency for uh, loose um, looseness to develop because of the pivot points from constantly being moved back and forth. Uh, when we install ballast and paint and glue and whatever you can think of to hold all this stuff together, there's a chance that it can obstruct um, the flow of electricity in these lines. Now, for me, what I'm going to do when I install this is I'm going to install my feeder wires on these points right here. If I install a feeder wire here, we're going to have electricity all the way up through this one rail. Feeder wire here and here is going to feed these rails and a feeder wire here is going to allow electricity to transfer through this one. So there's a chance that these two rails right here may not get electricity. When I install jumper wires on my turnouts, all I do is flip it over. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick a couple of points here. Uh, probably going to use this area here to install my jumper wires and what I'll do is I'll just simply take an X-Acto knife and I will cut out these pieces of plastic and expose the underside of the rail cut a piece of wire I generally use 24 gauge wire I'm going to cut it to length and solder it in between there that way once I solder my feeder wires on I will always have electricity to any one of these pieces of rail uh, without t taking or I'm not going to say it's never going to happen but it lessens the chance of not having electricity in these areas. Now if you don't feel comfortable soldering in these small points you can take out 
more if you choose to depending on your skills. Uh, I'm pretty confident with my soldering skills and my, the tip of my uh, soldering iron will fit down in there without melting these rails too much so uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut these out and get the pieces together and we'll show you how this is done. The backs of the ties have been cut out exposing the underside of the rail and uh, one other thing that I did is I take a triangle file and you can see here I just barely grazed the surface of that putting a little groove in there which is going to allow these pieces of copper wire to just lay in there plus at the same time by uh, filing out a little bit gives me a nice clean surface to work with um, so like I say I'm just going to take this piece right here and I'm just going to lay that in there. Tedious? Yes. Worth it? Yeah, I usually don't have much trouble with electricity when my trains are running around. And you can see just how these pieces lay in there after I've cut them the length. And now all I need to do is solder them and uh, we'll be ready to go. Okay, now that the uh, the wire, the jumper wire is in place, it's time to solder. And like I say, all I do is I uh, just put my tip right down in the middle of these. And uh, it doesn't take much, but tap the solder on there. It's going to heat this up pretty quick. There's a, there's a nice bead. There's a nice bead. So there you have some jumper wires on your turnouts to help with the flow of electricity. Now I will admit I'm working in a small space. I did melt the backs of the ties a little bit, but it has not affected the front side. And once you paint and ballast, you're not even going to see that. Now what I will do is I'll run my finger across there, uh, the, a little bit of a raised area from the, the plastic melting, but I'll just shave that off with the X-Acto knife, and even so, there's no bow, there's no bouncing, and no ridge on there. And just to give you an idea how uh, easily it is to conceal these uh, jumper wires after you paint and install ballast, uh, there's two of them right there. They're hard to see, but uh, I know where they are because I installed them. So, but they are definitely difficult to pick out, and if you ever came by my layout, you'd probably have a hard time finding them. Well, that's pretty much it for this clinic. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something. Uh, and as always, although this may be how I do things, it's not necessarily how you should be doing things. Uh, so don't take it personal, and uh, remember, if enjoy it and have fun and I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed this vid uh, little video and as always thanks for watching